Well, our full ESPN2 coverage of the 50th Bassmaster Classic is coming up on April 5th, 12th, and the 19th. And while we all anticipate that, we thought it would be a great idea to go back in time. And of course, to take us on this trip, who better than our colleague here, the 1999 Bassmaster Classic champ, Davey Hyde. But Davey, we're going to start with a tournament that maybe made that 1999 Classic possible. Well, it certainly did. It's, it's the reason for the 1999 Classic, in my opinion. I thought it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. Um, finishing second in a Bassmaster Classic, being oh so close, but it turns out, I think it was the best thing that ever happened to my career. I like that music. Name that too. I don't know, it's some spaghetti western from somewhere or another. Of course, this was this was half as far as we've come. This is 26th again, Bassmasters Classic. The shorts are gonna be a little shorter. The glasses are gonna be a whole lot bigger. Everything's gonna look different. It's, I, I love watching these old classics. Uh, the ones I competed in, definitely, but also the ones that I didn't. It's just so neat to see the see the fishermen and how they've changed and their their families, their wives. You know, there's Mark Davis and Tilly and just great folks, and it's good to see this. Now, this was 95 when Mark Davis won on High Rock Lake. I guess we're looking at it. And then we're going to look at the 96 here in, in a minute that I – Came close, but no cigar. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear that story because I know it's got a lot of twists and turns in it and, and a lot of lessons learned and we want to we want to learn, relearn them with you as we, as we take a look at this famous opening right here with those bongos going crazy <laughs> and the furious fish catching. People have fond memories of this show. David Fritz uh, going head first there is one of my favorites, no doubt about it. Second only to Larry Nixon having that big fish jump in the mega bucks at Harris Chain and turning to the camera saying, oh my gosh. Oh, that super mapping makes it come alive. The Coosa River there and Logan Martin, Lay Lake, Jordan down below. And so that's why it was tough to be an offshore cranker or, or offshore fishermen period the maps uh, were not very good as you notice that it's just like a little blue line and that's have that's at about it, all you had huh? have at it boys <laughs> get your flasher out there and figure them out look how languid it is out there lay lake had two different characters didn't it one when they were running water and one when they were not yeah the coosa river you know is, is it's great fishing no doubt about it but it was this is august this was our summertime classics uh and very very tough if they were not running water and they didn't run a lot uh, during the weekends our eventual winner george cochran had a had a way to solve the problem of too many boats following him around he, he did and he's explaining to everyone now you can follow me if you want to but this big flat is full of stumps there's you probably will not live through it if you try to follow me so he would get back in these areas and have them all to himself but george always a, a contender in these tougher tournaments he he could figure out a way to catch fish super shallow uh, when he won the 87 classic ohio river and and then here in this the tough conditions, that's what George loves. This is one of the, this is actually the first classic I ever attended in person. We stopped, we were working on the FLW back in those days, but we stopped, we were in the area and we stopped in and, and, and went in and watched some of the weigh-in at that classic. Wow, yeah. wow. So this, uh, this was my offshore spot. We'll dive into this a little bit later, but I had one place that I caught all of my fish in that classic. Lay Lake has really baffled me. Usually you've got an idea of an area that you've got confidence in, you think you can probably win the tournament there, or you've got a pattern established that you think you can run and possibly win the tournament. And I really have neither established. Lay Lake is a little different because you have so many options. You have the shoreline grass and standing timber and you know river channel ledges. I think it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna probably fish several different ways, try to adapt each day according to you know if the water's moving or if it's not moving. It was a real big deal uh, whether the water was moving or not, obviously, uh, that time of year in August. And it was tough no matter what, but when the water did move, you see here, it's good, great graphics here. Yes, sir. The shad moving right by the tree there. That's awesome. But that's literally what was happening. It, those fish would would pull up to that cover when, when the water moved, but just not, not much water movement during the event itself. So my strategy was to fish i had two two plans i tried to fish shallow in that grass but it just could not make it happen the other was i had one area with some standing timber and then i, I had one flat that was executes. good that's hank well no trip welding right there <laughs> that's, that's the young Boy, trip welding it does look like hank does it yeah he was he was a hot hand on the coosa river back in the day he was he was, he was one of the experts they went to in this show absolutely and uh Trip has won a lot of tournaments there on the Coosa River.
but the top is everybody fished out of the same sort of boat same setup and everything you look at all these these familiar faces from the past man oh man you see uh you know, jay yellis there there's your uh wrangler anglers the federation angler always fun to look at a snapshot from back in time now what was going on in your mind at that point where were you in your career and what did this classic mean to you? Well, I had just won my first. They were called Top 100s. I had just won the last regular season event leading into this classic. Our season ended in May, and I won the May tournament. Uh, and it really kind of set me on fire, so to speak. I'd had some. I'd won one uh, invitational a couple years before that, my very first year. But I, I really felt like you know, fishing against these guys that. It, it kind of gave me confidence that I could compete against the David Fritzes and the, the Roland Martins that were fishing then and um, just just so many great fishermen. Randy Blockett, you see there, Denny Brower. When I won that top 100, George Cochran, I mean, you just look, the camera roll here is just incredible, all the legendary anglers that were in this tournament, Larry Nixon. And I won that Invitational in 93, uh, spring of 94, I guess it was, but then when I won the top 100 fishing against the Rick Cluns and the, the Larry Nixons, those guys, it gave me confidence that, hey, I might be able to do this kind of deal. You know, it, it, it honestly just gave me confidence that I needed because these guys were my heroes growing up, no doubt about it. And winning that last event gave me momentum to go to this classic. And it was, it was tough conditions, uh, and, and we all knew this was going to be a tough tournament. I'd found a little deal, just a couple things going on, but... I could get bites consistently like I, when I found them one day, a few days later. Look at Clark Willett. We were roommates back then and certainly shared information, and Clark was having a tough practice just like everybody. But, oh, gosh. Well, Homer, you, Homer, Homer Circle and Roland Martin. And Roland Martin. How about that? Yeah, this is this is a scrapbook from, from the oh, yeah. past like I mean, no other. I was still in awe uh, up to this point, but I guess at this point, after winning that top 100, and this was probably the first classic I felt like I could win. Uh, I hate to admit it, but the, the previous ones, I just thought I was out of my league, so to speak. I mean, these are these are the legends of the sport. I'm just Davey Hyde. Now, now you got to feel different going into a classic because you talk about the top 100s, top 150s. You're only going against 40 other anglers, just 41 anglers in there. So you had to sort of heighten your anticipation and the possibilities that were available to you. It, it did, but but there again, I had just, just getting enough confidence in myself, to be honest with you. Um you know, just being around Forest Wood, Ray Scott, and you know all those fishermen we just saw, it was it was tough not to just be in awe being around those guys. But at this point in my career, I was thinking, gosh, you maybe you could win one of these. And here's one thing that I knew: to to have longevity in our sport, you had to win BASS Angler of the Year or a Bassmaster Classic. If you didn't do one of those two things, you were living year to year. Morning of the and, and I knew that. Put it. Yeah. I knew that. And I, unfortunately, it's still kind of that way. But at this point, absolutely, you were you were just a part-time gambler until you did one of those things to cement yourself in the books, a Bassmaster Angler of the Year or a Bassmaster Classic. And, and having a good practice in this event uh, gave me hope that I could do one of those things because I quit my job to make a living for my family and pursue my dreams. And I knew that until I was able to maybe win a classic or an angler of the year, just no security, no financial security. I had a You were just a day trader. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's David Fritz. You know, he had won the classic, and he's the best cranker in the world at that point. And here I am throwing a crankbait offshore trying to compete against these guys until I'd won that tournament just a few months before that in May against the David Fritzes and the Rick Cluns and the, you know, Mark Davis, who had won the classic the year before, cranking offshore. Um, I got confidence after I won that May tournament uh, on Neely Henry. But you come across a, a whole different set of circumstances. I mean, winning on the top 100s, 150s, winning at the Classic is a different different beast, right? Different beast, but there again, it, this tournament was good timing for me because, uh, number one, I didn't think I was really good enough to win a Bassmaster Classic, the first Classic or two I made, and it's – some guys are ashamed or, or afraid to say that, but I think a lot of guys, probably the majority of the fishermen, go into that first classic thinking, gosh, I, these guys, you know, I might not be quite as good as some of these other guys. And there's Kevin Van Dam, you know, he's got the first day lead with 14 pounds. Uh, you got to have weight to beat Tom Vickers. 
but I had I had a spot. I had two places, but I had one that was I had confidence in. And similar to the classic in '99, I caught five fish and I left that spot. I did not make another cast. So me being in second with 12-4, I made five casts on my best spot, put five fish in the boat, and left. So I had a little a little ace in the hole, so to speak. The only thing that bugged me was I, I had two spots. The one spot that I caught these five fish on and weighed them in. The other spot, there were two other anglers fishing, and they were pretty good anglers. <laughs> You know, Mickey Bruce and George Cochran, the three of us shared a, an area in this event, and I wish they had not been there. <laughs> you hit little patches of fish, and, you know, I, I've been able to do it fairly regular in practice, and I did it today. Uh, it just, you know, depends on how many groups of fish you hit. Hopefully I've come across a good group. Well, you look pretty serious there. I mean, you, you had a lot going through your mind but at that point. I did, and like I mentioned earlier, this is – at this point of my career, I knew you were you were part time, and until you won a Bassmaster Angler Year or a Bassmaster Classic, it was year to year. And uh, there's Clark; he was having a good tournament there. So here's something about the second day that I may have made a mistake here because there was an early morning bite. Even if the water, it's just like everywhere in the summer, you have a little bit of activity first thing in the morning. Uh, you see Clark here with one offshore cranking. The second day, I was in second place leaving, and I had about 30 boats lined up to follow me. Lord, man. And I didn't start on my best spot. I, I fished, but I basically just was buying time until they all gave up on me. Oh, you, you wanted to go out and not yeah, catch fish I, for a while? Because I was so concerned with... The, the place that I was sharing with Mickey Bruce and George Cochran was timber, and it was scattered. I wasn't so concerned about that place as much as I was the offshore place that I had that I was cranking. If somebody, I mean, it was my only place, and if if one of those spectators had followed me and fished it uh, before I got there the final day, I, I knew I would be doomed. So I I, I that second day, and I only weighed in four fish. I did not go to my best area until late in the day. But so here's, here's you, the you other thing. You purposefully tanked the early morning bite. I did. Wow. Because I thought it was worth the, the risk of those, all those spectators fishing the area. Um, and I, that's just a gamble I made. So I did not go there until midday, the second day. And I fished it hard. The first day I caught five and left it. The, the second day I went there, like at noon, I had zero in the boat. And I hooked five fish, put four of them in the boat. I had one fish that was a pound and a half. It was not a giant, but it was a pound and a half that came off right beside the boat. And I weighed in only four that day. It cost me the, it cost me the classic. I lost one pound and a half fish yesterday thomas vickers landed lunkers on us. and we get down to the weigh-in on day number two and of course that's a, that's pretty crucial it sets up and everything changed the top of the top of the leaderboard changed a little bit but you you hung right right in there in a striking position well it's just it's just really tough uh i had not led i was in second place out of the first day and then dropped back a place or two the second day there again lost that fish that i'll never forget uh, just a tough tournament just a real real tough tournament and, you had to be on if you had a good spot uh, you had to be there at the right time here's something i'll never forget um like we mentioned earlier the best crankers in the world were in this tournament um clark right there and david fritz rick clun mark davis the the best crankers of the time no doubt about it were in this tournament and the first day several of those guys zeroed it was a tough tournament now you talk about this offshore bite and there you are at your good place i'm assuming yep. right now this this is a ledge bite right it is and i caught most of those fish cranking there's a fish on a after i would catch some fish on a crankbait i'd go to the jig tommy martin did great on water commentary by the way yeah that's right i, I was impressed by that <laughs> and that's that's is that a good representation of what was going on absolutely absolutely that was the great thing about and i i'm sitting there fishing the classic listening to, to uh, tommy martin thinking boy he knows more about this than i do <laughs> I mean, he is just a legendary fisherman, a great, oh, one of the smart guy of all too, time. very smart guy. So this is the area that George was fishing deep. I, Mickey and I were all three fishing in this one particular cove. 
George caught several of his fish, I think all of his fish the first day with the spinnerbait through these trees. I was doing the same thing. I think I caught one or two fish there the entire term. All the rest of my fish came on uh, that other deep spot that I was fishing a jig earlier on. And we just thought it had been tough until the final day, the third day. Um, other than that flurry I had in the morning, it was it was really, really tough. Of course, we were into the weekend. They're not running as much water. And, yeah, I think uh, that particular spot, had, had this is the day two, yep. So I think if me, George, or Mickey would have had that spot to ourselves, it could have been one in that one creek with that standing timber. Uh, but... Uh, we didn't realize that we were all three fishing it the first day. The third day, we all three showed up there at the same time. Uh, we realized, oh boy, so here's, <laughs> we're all sharing this. But the final day was the f only day that I started on what I thought was my, my best spot. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, you know, a glory morning start to a Bassmaster class. Did you have a number in mind? The three of you had separated yourself from everyone else pretty. It, it was going to be one of you three. Yep, I really felt like if I could catch 13 pounds, I could win. I really did because it was a very, very tough tournament. I think this is the first cast that final morning. Um, it's just a neat little spot right there. And it's the first time I'd been to it early in the morning. It's hard, and there's one little vein that's, that's one little rough place in it. It's like it runs... That had to be a great feeling right there. It, it was when my that final morning when I did actually start there. When my bait touched the bottom on that spot, I, it just it loaded up with a big old spotted bass, and I was like, "Wow, here we go!" And it literally that was the next cast I think. Final day of the Bassmaster Classic, and it, they're biting every cast. A very tough Bassmaster Classic. Oh, that had to be fun. And you, you had launched yourself into the lead by this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I might even be leading this derby all of a sudden. One more. I think this is the third cast. I can't help but just, yep. One more. Ooh, locked up again. Heights three for three. <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeling it a little bit right here, no doubt about it, thinking, gosh, you, you might win this thing. Um, and that's, I made a big mistake and I, I, I never forgot it. Uh, I think that's the third. He pulled in here and he just caught a real solid limit of fish. So that, that was really a Went to the jig here after the crankbait. You know, they, they go back to their rooms at night and they, they isolate themselves, get by themselves and, and study their maps and just try to come up with the, the right decision for the next day. Where will they start? How will they run their little routes and their game plans? And, you know, Davey Hyde, George Cochran have an excellent chance to win this year's Classic, but it's going to boil down to which one of those fishermen have actually found the area that's holding the most feeding bass. Davey has a fish on. He just hooked a good fish. So, I, I've fish. got to tell this on myself. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't care. I hadn't cashed the check at this point, but I sure felt like it was in my wallet. <laughs> um, it, I, I can't emphasize enough how tough of a tournament this was. And to hear Tommy Martin, you know, a hero, breaking it down and Davey Hyde or George Cochran's going to win this tournament, I'm thinking, George ain't got nothing on me right now. I'm catching them every cast. Um, and and I'll have to admit, the, the camera boat started gathering around, more spectators started coming to me. This was before Bassmaster Live, but word would travel sure, on the water. And, and you had to know on the final day of the Classic, if there's cameras, extra cameras coming to you, extra spectators, uh, Tommy Martin sitting 30 yards from you talking about what you're doing. And um, so I got caught up in the moment. I'll have to admit, I got caught up in the moment. I was talking to the camera. You, you see George, he's talking after he had won this. This is this is audio, not at the moment, but yeah. he's yeah. – and Davey got too busy talking during the moment. 
So you took, we go back to that focus when you talk about your win uh, three years later. You said it was all about focus and, and the ability to lock down. And, and, and even shots of you at the ramp at that tournament on the Delta, you look like you are you are absolutely, you've got the world blotted out. You're exactly right. And, and for a reason, because I knew, I knew that I had that trophy, uh, had my hand on it and let it slip away. And I said I would never let that happen again. And it was 99 until I felt like I had a chance to win. Yeah, I made the 90, 98 Classic. You know, I made those other Classics, but when I had that, felt like I'd found a good area in 99, then that's why I was, you know, just so focused, so locked in. Because I realized, hopefully in fishing, like other parts of life, you learn from your mistakes. And I absolutely made a mistake that could have cost me my career. Uh, in this class. Well, how did that lack of focus translate into something that you, you might have done to win that? I mean, something that you missed that, that you might have done to win it. Well, you just, I, I just know that I fish my best, and I think everyone does. I, I hate to speak for everyone, but I, I know I fish my best when I'm totally thinking about the fish, what the fish are going to do next, what my next move is going to be, where my next cast should be where my next fishing spot should be. George left the creek that he had caught most of his fish and went into that backwater shallow early, uh, shallow area that final day in the final hour to catch the two fish that beat me. Had I made a move like that, I could have won. But I was I was talking to the cameras, just kind of going so through the motions. So you checked out a little. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Well, here we go. Fast forward all the way to weigh-in time. The, the the classic goes by fast, but it really goes by fast in this show. And the weigh-ins are, are always a joy to watch from back in the day. They've always been a huge production. And the, and the lasers. Oh my gosh! You almost had to have your welding glasses if you're going to go to, go to a classic weigh-in, especially on the final day. But man, what what pageantry! What a show it was for all these fans packed in. This is Birmingham too, I believe. Yes. That was a it's it always a big crowd and always a knowledgeable enthusiast. Man, the lasers just will not quit. They will not. They will not. <laughs> but, hey, it was a great show. And, and there again, it's just the history of BASS, the history of our sport. And and all this looks so different to our weigh-ins now, but building this sport. So I've got to I've got to talk about this one a little bit. I think this yeah, was the sort year of where – you thought Ray was over here, and then all of a sudden he poof, he was on the way in stage. They had a look alike, I guess, what? dressed up you like a body Ray's double. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. No. We get, need to get a Mercer body double and yes, do that at a classic yeah. coming up. Yeah, sort sort of sort of magic himself all over the auditorium. That would be pretty cool. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Ray just disappeared and reappeared. All right, so you're sitting back there. You're listening to all this going on, and, and you got an idea in your mind of how what your weight is. Well, I certainly wanted to win the Bassmaster Classic, but I didn't think I quite had the weight that some people were telling me I had that had looked at my fish when I was catching them. I had, uh, obviously, a camera on me that final morning. And I, I just kept thinking, I don't have that much, guys. But I wanted to believe them. I wanted to believe them. So they had sort of convinced me that I had more than, than even I thought I had because I wanted to believe them. You know, when somebody tells you something you want to believe, it's easy for them to convince you. And, and that's what, exactly what happened. And so Mickey weighs in, and I hadn't talked to him, but I knew Mickey had been in contention all week long. And they didn't want us to talk to one another at all because they wanted to obviously be a surprise sure. to the crowds and to the fishermen. Um, but to see Mickey, and I love Mickey Bruce, but to see him not do as well, I thought, wow, this is getting right down to it. If I've got as much as they say I've got, um, I might have my chance to win a Bassmaster Classic. That just shows you how tough it was. Mickey was on them all week. And, you know, that final day, one of the greatest fishermen of all time, you know, catches three pounds. But there were guys – there were guys that didn't catch a fish in this tournament multiple days. Oh, yeah. And, and very few that caught three limits. Yes. Yeah, or like, like a handful. Right, yeah. So here's George weighing in. And I, I will have to say I was good friends with George. And I, I talked to George for just a second. I said, what do you have? I've got to know because I, I can't live through this <laughs> if you don't at least tell me. And he said, I've definitely got eight pounds. I've definitely got eight pounds. So then I did a little math in my head, and I thought, well, I do have a chance if he's just got eight. But George 
as we all do, didn't want to overestimate. I actually looked at the scales there and it was nine pounds. When he had nine six, I knew that I was not going to win the classic. I knew I did not have enough. But I'm the last guy I drive riding in. You got to have a smile. You got to think you've got a chance. But I, I felt in my heart that it, it wasn't going to be enough. But I certainly hoped that it would be. And when you've got, got all these fans and they all stand up, they get up on their feet when the last person comes in because nine out of ten times the last person that weighs is the winner. So I was supposed to be the guy. Oh, you can see moment. the pain I'm in. I mean, really, oh, yeah, you can see. Absolutely. I, I, the, 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 that's the hardest smile I've ever seen a fellow try to put on. Yeah, because I – and I had – I don't think we quite saw it, but when I went by my wife, she was eight and a half months pregnant. I shook my head, and you can tell. I'm, I don't look like I'm going to win the Classic there because no. I knew I didn't quite have enough. Be off a closer. Ten pounds and 12 ounces. George Cochran is our winner. I went from being the center of attention to nobody cared about Davey Hyatt anymore, which for good measure, I mean, George was the winner. I couldn't even find my way to get off the stage. <laughs> and then when I did see the steps, I walked down them, and there was my wife and uh, her sister and then uh, my five-year-old son, Parker. And he was crying his eyes out. I mean, just boohooing. So I kneeled down. We on my knees at the bottom of the steps and hugged him, and we both cried for a little bit as George is making this victory lap. And my son just kept crying. I, I got my composure back, and I was like, it's, it's going to be okay, and he just kept kept crying. And I thought, does he know what $100,000 means at five years old? When he finally settled down, I said, so tell me what's wrong, Parker. Daddy's okay. Mom's okay. It's going to be okay. And he pointed to George and his family. They were just finishing the victory lap, and he's pointed to the boat and said, they told me I was going to get riding that boat. And I looked him straight in his eyes and said, we will ride that boat one day. And that's probably the first promise I ever made my son. You know, he's five years old. And well, that's a tough promise to make. But I thought I was given totally committing 100% to my career and to fishing for a living. But I caught another gear from that moment on. So finishing second at that moment seemed like the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it was the best thing looking back on my whole fishing career. It's the best thing that ever happened to me because it lit a fire under me like no other. What a story. Nothing else need be said. Thank you, David. Hi. Thank you.